the only peaceful solution. We in America do not have government by the majority. We have government by the majority who participate. Thomas Jefferson. Today we have a constitutional crisis, a judicial crisis, we have a political crisis, and a monetary crisis. Add to that a national emergency, and we've come to the end of America. If you fail to act today, this will be America's children. Silence and non-action equals consent. In First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 20, we read, Be strong and of good courage, and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Power. It's all about power. Today the elite control the people through legislation, corporations, monopolies. They control our government through the two major parties, the Republican and the Democratic parties. They control our judicial system through the Bar Association. They control our education. They control our entertainment. They control our media. They control our religion. And they control our money. And all this adds up to the New World Order. But it's all about power. With these two power structures, they're able to control the entire country, our entire government, our judicial process, and all the people. Today we're going to talk about judicial power. Our solution. Establish 3,141 common law grand juries in all 3,141 United States counties. It is the duty of the common law grand jury to expose all fraud and corruption, whether it is in the political or judicial realm, and stop it. The authority of the grand jury is found only in the Bill of Rights, therefore it comes from God and not government. Fifth Amendment, no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a presentment or indictment of a grand jury. A presentment differs from an indictment in that it is an accusation made by a grand jury on their own motion, either upon their own observation and knowledge or upon evidence before them, while an indictment is preferred to the suit of the government and is usually framed in the first instance by the prosecuting officer of the government and by him laid before the grand jury to be found or ignored. Using New York as an example, one Monday morning our servant government will awaken to 62 common law grand juries acting together in one accord and bring these people under control. At the time of this recording, we have 46 states across the nation already working on grand juries. One day our government will awaken to the common law grand juries in 50 states acting together in one accord and then liberty's light will shine once again to a lost world. The following is from a U.S. Supreme Court ruling, the United States versus Williams. Anton Scalia, writing for the majority, said, It is a constitutional fixture in its own right. The American grand jury is neither part of the judicial, executive, nor le legislative branch of government, but instead belongs to the people. It is in effect a fourth branch of government, governed and administered to directly by and on behalf of the American people, and its authority emanates from the Bill of Rights. The Fifth Amendment demands a traditional functional common law grand jury. They went on to say that the grand jury is an institution separate from the courts. The courts do not preside over the function of the common law grand jury. The courts have no supervisory judicial authority over the common law grand jury. 
The grand jury's functional independent from the judicial branch is evident both in the scope of its power to investigate criminal wrongdoing and in the matter in which its power is exercised. The grand jury can investigate merely on the suspicion that a law has been violated or even because it wants assurance that it is not. The grand jury needs not identify the offenders, its suspects, or even the precise nature of the offense it is investigating. The grand jury requires no authorization from its constituting courts to initiate an investigation or to seek an indictment. The grand jury operates without the interference of a presiding judge. The grand jury swears in its own witnesses and deliberates in total secrecy. The grand jury remains free to pursue its investigations unhindered by external influences or supervision so long as it does not trench upon the legitimate right of any witness called before it. The Fifth Amendment constitutional guarantee presupposes an investigative body acting independently of either prosecuting attorney or judge. The grand jury belongs to no branch of the institute, institutional government, serving as a kind of a buffer or a referee between the government and the people. The Sixth Amendment's right to counsel does not attach when an individual is summoned to appear before the grand jury, even if he is the subject of the investigation. It would run counter to the whole history of the grand jury institution to permit an indictment to be challenged on the grounds that there was incompetent or inadequate evidence before the grand jury. So what's possible? We can turn back the political and judicial clock to 1789. We can indict criminals including judges and politicians. We can reinstate the real duties of the sheriff. We can reinstate the elected committeemen. We can reopen our armories and reinstate our militia. We can force compliance to the Third Continental Congress 2009 Articles of Freedom. We can stop open political corruption and bind them by the chains of the Constitution. We can stop open judicial corruption and bind them by the chains of the Constitution. We can do all of the above in 30 days or less. We can save America. Our plan, establish a jury pool in all 3,142 counties. When exhausted, we will draw jurors from the voters' rolls. There will be no litmus test or psychological evaluation through a questionnaire form. Jurors are to be drawn at random from a pool within the accused county or state. Grand jurists are to be impaneled no longer than one week, except when an investigation requires a longer term. Also, they may be recalled to determine rare, extraordinary decisions during the pretrial. We, the people, will establish four full-time administrators whose job is to orient jurors and answer questions for both trial and grand. Answer complaints from the people and perform as an investigative body on behalf of the grand jury. All jurists are to take the following vow to be recorded with the county administrator. I vow to the governor of the universe in my capacity as jurist to ensure that all public servants uphold the United States Constitution and Bill of Prohibitions and to carry out all my deliberation under natural law, principled under justice, honor, and mercy and to strictly adhere to the following two legal maxims. One, every right when withheld must have a remedy and every injury its proper redress. And two, in the absence of a victim, there can be no crime, corpus delecte, and the state cannot be the victim. Some people claim or have been taught, shall I say, that uh, you know the Lord doesn't allow us to take an oath or a vow. Uh, but the Bible is clear that, you know, our conversations are to be nay and yea. Uh, but there are times when we need to take a, an, an oath or a vow. 
in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 4 through 5, we read, When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. So I think uh, this is important enough that everybody that's going to participate must take a vow. Um, and of course, uh, we expect that our servants take the oath. Jurisdiction. No person can be tried for a crime without an indictment by a grand jury of their peers, and if indicted, they are to be judged by a jury of their peers. In suits where the value in controversy shall exceed twenty dollars, the right of a trial of trial by jury is preserved. No decision of a grand jury is reviewable in any court of the government. Any government trans transgression against anyone in any respect. Any government breaking of articles of peace or security. Any dispute regarding anyone who has been unconstitutionally detained or removed by the government without legal sentence of his peers from his lands, his home, liberties, or lawful right. Jury Rules It is the duty of the grand jury, if anyone's unalienable rights have been violated or removed without a legal sentence of their peers from their lands, their homes, their liberties, or lawful rights, we, the twenty-five, shall straightway restore them. And if a dispute shall arise concerning this matter, it shall be settled according to the judgment of the twenty-five grand jurors, the sureties of the peace. Marbury v. Madison, 1803, a legal maxim. Every right one withheld must have a remedy, and every injury its proper redress. Hulk v. Henderson. That statute that would deprive a citizen of the right of a person of person or property without a regular trial according to the course and usage of common law would not be the law of the land. There is a common law principle which states that for there to be a crime, there must first be a victim, corpus delecte. In the absence of a victim, there can be no crime, and the state cannot be that victim. In order to establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity by deliberating under natural law, principled under justice, honor, and mercy, for a perpetual administration of trust on behalf of the people, acknowledging the foundation upon which all law weighs. The common law grand jury can and will take control. We will read the Riot Act to all of our elected and selected Supreme Court judges. Prosecutors will have no more puppet jurors and juries. We will end corruption in our state capitals. Sheriffs are the people's police force and are the top cop. They must keep their oaths and disobey any illegal orders and we will back them up. The common law grand jury indictment cannot be stopped. The process. Grand jury issues a true bill of indictment. True bills are signed by the grand jury foreman. Indictments are filed with the clerk of the courts, thus beginning a formal criminal proceeding. U.S. Uh, Code uh, 18, subsection 2071. Whoever willfully and unlawfully conceals, removes, mutilates, obliterates, or destroys, or attempts to do so, documents filed or deposited with any clerk or officer of any court shall be fined or imprisoned not more than three years or both. U.S. Code 18, uh, 2076. Clerk is to file. Whoever being a clerk willfully refuses or neglects to make or forward any report, certificate, statement, or document as required by law shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than one year or both. And this one is very specifically for the, for the judge. 
uh, whosoever knowingly uses intimidation, threatens, or corruptly persuades another person or attempts to do so, or engages in misleading conduct towards another person with the intent to influence, delay, or prevent an official proceeding, cause or induce any, any person to withhold a document or other objects from an official proceeding, alter, destroy, mutilate, or conceal an official proceeding, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 20 years or both. We have been conditioned. We have been robbed. If you have a spiritual problem, you have been programmed to find a priest or a pastor. If you have a political problem, you have been programmed to join a party. If you have a justice problem, you are programmed to hire a lawyer. <clears throat> this makes you a slave. This is where you need to find freedom. Spiritual power gives forgiveness of sins and gives you your unalienable rights. <clears throat> it gives you a sense of justice, a sense of honor, and a sense of mercy. Political power provides for domestic tranquility, common defense, and the general welfare. Judicial power establishes justice and secures the blessings of liberty. These three powers control your destiny. These three powers can free you from tyrants. When we don't have control of these three powers, then we are subject to the rule of tyrants. And right now they have programmed us to run away from these things. They have programmed us to find a priest or a pastor, to find a party, to find a lawyer, to get into their process, the things that they've created. And therefore, you are a slave until you come above it, take control of your destiny. Until you control these three powers, you cannot have liberty. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. You know, if we do not have spiritual power, if we do not have a relationship with our God, if we do not go into our prayer closets and work it out as a son to a father, then you cannot have political power. You cannot have judicial power. You cannot have a sense of justice. You cannot have a sense of honor. You cannot have a sense of mercy. You will have self-righteousness and not true righteousness. We cannot then establish a justice and, and we cannot secure the blessings of liberty for we have not been blessed with liberty. So, you know, we must turn back to God and we must humble ourselves. We must pray. We must seek his face. We must turn from our wicked ways and then he may forgive us our sins and heal our land. The judicial fraud our courts are controlled by a private association. The state does not license lawyers. Furthermore, lawyers do not practice law. They practice statutes. The state bar card is not a license. It is a union's dues card. The bar is a professional association like the actors' unions, painters' unions, etc. No other association, even doctors, issue their own licenses. All licenses are issued by the state. The Bar Association is a private association. It cannot license anyone on behalf of the state. The ABA accredits all the law schools, holds their private examinations, selects the students that they will accept into their organization, and issues them so-called licenses for, free, for fees but does not issue state licenses to lawyers. The bar is the only one that can punish or disbar a lawyer and not the state. The ABA also selects the lawyers that they consider qualified for judgeship and various other offices in the state. Only the Bar Association 
or the designating committees can remove any of these lawyers from public office. In Bovier's Law D Dictionary 1858, it tells us justice is synonymous with virtue. It is confined to the things simply good or evil. Luke chapter 6 verse 19 tells us virtue emanates from God. History records the struggles in courts between the mind of God and the mind of man. Civil law versus common law. In Luke chapter 11 verse 52 we read what the Lord said, Woe unto you lawyers for you have taken away the key of knowledge. God is that key of knowledge. Right to practice law. New York Code subsection 478 says practicing or appearing as an attorney at law without being admitted and registered. It says nothing about being licensed. Lawyers and attorneys are not licensed to practice law. The certificate from the state supreme court only authorizes them to represent wards of the court. Wards of the court are infants and persons of unsound mind, someone placed under the protection of a legal guardian by the court. A next friend is a person who represents someone else who is unable to attend to their own, his or her own interests. Those are the federal rules of civil procedures. The practice of law cannot be licensed by any state. U.S. Supreme Court uh, ruling uh, Schwar versus the Board of Examiners. This is another U.S. Supreme Court ruling that says the practice of law is an occupation of common right. And again, another U.S. Supreme Court ruling. Members of the group who are competent non-lawyers can assist other members of the group achieve the goals of the group in court without being charged with unauthorized practice of law. Statutes are not law. Our courts are controlled by a private association. Legislators are authorized under the Constitution, ordained by the people to write statutes and codes that are enforced as law to control bureaucrats, municipalities, government agencies, elected officials, interstate commerce, but not the people whose rights are unalienable and cannot be legislated. Self versus Ray. The common law is the real law, the supreme law of the land. The code, rules, regulations, policies, and statutes are not the law. Bonnet versus Villar. The general rule is that an unconstitutional statute, though having the form and name of law, is in reality no law, but is wholly void and ineffective ineffective for any purpose, since its unconstitutionality dates from the time of its enactment. In legal contemplation, it is as inoperative as if it had never been passed. Since an unconstitutional law is void, the general principle follows, that it imposes no duties, it confers no rights, it creates no office, it bestows no power or authority on anyone. It affords no protection and justifies no acts performed under it. A void act cannot be legally consistent with a valid one. An unconstitutional law cannot operate to supersede any existing law. Indeed, insofar as the statute runs counter to the fundamental law of the land, the Constitution, it is superseded thereby. No one is bound to obey an unconstitutional law, and no courts are bound to enforce it. It's all about jurisdiction and consent. Challenge the jurisdiction, refuse to consent, and you will win. To deprive the people of their sovereignty, it is first necessary to get the people to, so, to agree to submit to the authority of the entity they have created. That is done by getting them to claim they are citizens of that entity. 
in a Supreme Court ruling, U.S. Supreme Court ruling, State versus Waters. If defendant enters a plea of not guilty and is in court the day of the trial, the court has jurisdiction over that person. Mohammed versus State, U.S. Supreme Court ruling. Municipal courts do not have jurisdiction to render final judgment on felony charges. People v. Gabay, New U.S. Supreme Court ruling. An appearance ticket is not an, is not an accusatory instrument, and its filing does not confer jurisdiction over the defendant. Another U.S. Supreme Court ruling, People v. Gisti. Service of an appearance ticket on an accused does not confer personal or subject matter jurisdiction upon a criminal court. Again, it's all about jurisdiction and consent. Challenge the jurisdiction and you will win. Trial courts act without jurisdiction when it acts without inherent or common law authority. U.S. Supreme Court ruling, State v. Rodriguez. Basso v. UPL, another U.S. Supreme Court ruling. When challenged, jurisdiction must be documented, shown, and proven to lawfully exist before a case may lawfully proceed in the courts. Fontenot v. State, U.S. Supreme Court ruling. Where the court is without jurisdiction, it has no authority to do anything other than to dismiss the case. Davis v. State, U.S. Supreme Court ruling. Criminal law magistrates have no power of their own and are unable to enforce any ruling. Cruden v. Neal, U.S. Supreme Court ruling. Every man is independent of all laws except those prescribed by nature. He is not bound by any institutions formed by his fellow man without his consent. So therefore, if there is no injured party, there is no crime. Simply put, legislators do not have the authority to legislate people's behavior. Neither do the courts have the authority to enforce legislation to control the people's behavior. Law is not complex. Common law is natural law. It is written in the hearts of all men. The Holy Bible tells us, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Matthew 22, verses 37 through 40. The law is written in the hearts of men. Romans chapter 2, verse 15. Natural law. If there is no injured party... There is no crime. Principles of Liberty Consent and Jurisdiction It's all about consent and jurisdiction. In order to have liberty, it is extremely important that you understand consent. Our servant government can do nothing without your consent. The Declaration of Independence, we read, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of of the governed. Now the consent of the governed, uh, you know, two of the most powerful consentors are the common law grand jury and the committeeman, the elected committeeman. 
and in another video we will discuss the elected committee man. Uh, but right now we're looking at the grand jury and the key thing here is the consent of the government. You have, as an individual, get to consent. Every time you come in contact with the government, you can consent to what they want to do or you can not consent. And whenever they resist you, they are the servant. Whenever they resist you, then they are in violation. They have exceeded their jurisdiction when they resist you. They can only act within the jurisdiction, within the authority that they have been given. Once they step outside of that authority, they, they are now violating you, and they are subject uh, to being sued and subject to criminal uh, prosecution. Any authority our servants have, have is by our consent. If they act outside their authority, they are subject to criminal charges under U.S. Codes 4218 and liable for damages under U.S. Codes and common law. Our servant government has defrauded us. They know they need the people's consent, but they dumbed us down and created facades. The existing grand juries are puppets controlled by the politically appointed government paid prosecutors who orchestrate the will of the grand jury. The existing trial juries are puppets controlled by a government paid judge under political pressure to maintain the status quo, who orchestrates the will of the trial jury. They know they need the people's consent and they commit fraud every time they use the puppet juries and now you know. Principle of liberty, consent and jurisdiction. It's all about consent and jurisdiction. The judge is your servant. He has no authority to judge and sentence you without your consent. In legal terms, when the judge asks you, do you understand? He means, do you stand under the authority of this court? So when you say yes, you just gave him or her jurisdiction over you. Our U.S. Constitution only authorizes common law courts. Our New York State Constitution says the courts of appeal, the Supreme Court, including the appellate division, shall be courts of record. A court of record removes the power of the judge to make a ruling. His role is that of the administrator of the court. The final determiner, terminator is the tribunal who is e either the sovereign plaintiff or a jury. Remember, the servant cannot rule over the master. Can the clay rule over the potter? Our servant government has defrauded us. They know they need the people's consent, but they dumbed us down and created facades. The existing grand juries are puppets controlled by the politically appointed government paid prosecutor who orchestrates the will of the grand jury. Every man is independent of all law except those prescribed by nature. He is not bound by any inst institutions formed by his fellow man without his consent. Prudent versus Neil. Herein, in, herein is liberty. If you do not give them consent, they have no jurisdiction over you. So under U.S. Codes 42 and 18, when you are detained for violating a statute, you have just been kidnapped. And if the judge sets a bail, he has just set a ransom. And when the prosecutor confirms the charges, they are all part of a conspiracy. And you can put them in jail and receive compensation for your injuries. It's all about consent and jurisdiction. To find out more, go to nationallibertyalliance.org Slave language. Words in court have a legal consequence. The following must become a state of mind. We must think free, act free, and only then will you be free. We are a republic, not a democracy. The United States is a nation, not a country. We are people, not subjects. You are domiciled, 
not a resident. You have unalienable rights, not constitutional rights or civil rights. Constitutions are law, statutes are not law. You are above statutes. You are not a statute abiding citizen. You ordained the Constitution for the United States of America and the states. You are sovereign. The state is a clipped sovereign. You practice the law of the land. Lawyers practice statutes. New York is a sovereign country, not part of a federal government. This is your court. You are the sovereign and the judge works for you. What to do? Don't depend on others. This is your responsibility to stand up. Only the people can save the Republican. Washington and Albany and all the other state capitals will never do it. They are the problem. If you are not already on our website, go to nationallibertyalliance.org. On the top right, click Join Our National Meetup to receive notifications and emails. Join our Monday night conference calls. Click the link on the left for more info. Click on the top left to register as a jurist in your county. Check yes to become an organizer. Partnership with all county leaders in your state. Help your neighboring counties to organize. Take our three and a half jurist orientation workshop course which will instruct you on how to start a grand jury in your county and prepare for your jury. Click on our donate icon on the left and support Liberty. Give $10 or more.